Folks, I literally woke up thinking about slippery, slimy sea life in a frickin' video game. Cause, you know, that's what happens when your entire existence revolves around said video game, mind you. But then I remembered just how amazing eel can actually be, and that many still don't even know that they exist. But I also remembered that eels don't actually come from the sea, so my entire intro made zero sense, yet I still went with it regardless. But all I'm saying is that eel be good, everyone. So let's see how good. And as I said, we ain't actually catching any out at sea. But thank freaking goodness for that, let me tell ya. Eel come from ponds, but not just any ponds, mind you. The blue ponds of the caves. Freshwater fish can come from both types of ponds up there on the surface, but only eel swim their way out of these guys down here. So there will be no mistaking what you'll be walking away from from your fishing trips, which is also great compared to ocean fishing, mind you. But from toadstool spawns, the wilds proper with all that lichen around you, or even just in parts of the muddy turf outskirts, all you need to know is that you get eels from ponds in the caves. Well, that's not really all you need to know, but I think you know what I mean. But similar to all the other ponds within this game, these blue ones will hold up to 10 eels each, and an eel will quote unquote regenerate every two minutes or so, mind you. Remember now though, the more you fish in a pond, the longer it will take to catch more stuff later on. So switching between a few can really speed things up and make your time down here as efficient as possible. To add to that, however, recent changes to the game have gone and made it to where we can no longer stack both freshwater fish and eel as they come out of the water, but a simple murder spree will fix that right up for ya. And sure, technically we have kind of made it where they spoil faster now, but we're really not meant to hang on to these catches for long. Trust me, even if they are not half bad as a snack at 9.4 hunger and 3 health a pop. But here's an actual tip for you here. Cooking them will not bar you from the recipes and uses that are coming up, so that's fantastic. But doing so also allows you to store them in ice boxes now. Plus, cooked eel already spoils slower than live or dead ones anyways. And it boasts 12.5 hunger and 8 health restored this time around. Not bad. Oh, but it gets so, so much better, everyone. For you see, eels are one of the only fish foods out there to offer a fish value of one. Only large ocean fish and lobsters can do the same, mind you. So with this in mind, eels are not only the most accessible fish in this game for pretty much every fish recipe in this game, they are absolutely amazing for surf and turf specifically here. And it is a legendary dish across all of Don't Starve history given just its insanely easy recipe. Cause who wouldn't want 33 sanity, nearly 40 hunger, and 60 health for but 2 eel and 2 monster meats. Heck, you don't even have to use 2 eel. You can use one and another smaller fish even if that suits you. But this is what eel is all about. This is why it's so flippin' good to find a fishing spot early. And one last tip here, even though it's not necessarily required, if you struggle with seafood gumbo, eels are also gonna be very helpful there. Ah, but let us not forget the golden showers, of course. For you see, eel are also the only meat in this game that the Pit King will accept for five gold nuggets each. All others only lead the one gold, everyone. So one fishing rod could equal 45 gold immediately. Absolutely insane. And don't even worry about it being dead or cooked either, as both are accepted. Oh, but don't let us forget a very forgettable yet unique use of eels, folks. Unagi here. 5 sanity, 18.8 .8 hunger, and 12 health isn't great, but given how both lichen and eel are both found in the exact same biome at the end of the day, unagi could be an easy ruin snack if need be. Do note though, that while eel is 110% required, the addition of kelp in the Don't Starve Together has made lichen less so. But two last notes here. 
Eels take a day to dry in the small jerky. And while I still feel like it should be leading to big jerky at the end of the day, some quick sanity foods is always welcomed. And finally, if you ever wish to keep a slimy pet as your own, then go for it, folks, with the fish scalomatic here. Good stuff. And there you have it, everyone. Our first legit quick bit esque video in quite some time. And I truly do not know why I even thought about eels and this video in the first place. But hey, I wasn't actually lying when I said just how amazing they could be, now wasn't I? So perhaps this video is going to be quite useful to folks. But fishing in this game is already incredible to begin with. But I think eel here are what make it almost too easy, if you know what I mean. So why not do it? Reel them in, folks. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.